Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Now, before we move on to the uh, forms of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that are found within the brain, I just want to mention one more thing about the antagonism of uh, the ganglionic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. It is not blocked by alpha bungarotoxin, so it's insensitive to alpha bungarotoxin. So alpha bungarotoxin will not bind to the acetylcholine binding sites of this alpha three two beta four three heteropentamer. Okay, so insensitive to alpha bungarotoxin, which remember was this powerful uh, component of snake venom, which uh, was a competitive antagonist at the uh, skeletal muscle nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, and uh, resulted in uh, the paralysis of the prey of that snake. Okay, so let's now move on to the forms that we find in the central nervous system. Okay, so we'll start with the alpha-7 homo Pentamer. Okay, so in the brain, there are two major forms of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, and the first one we'll discuss is the alpha-7 homopentamer, just for a bit of variation, because the other one is basically very similar to this um, ganglionic form. Okay, so we'll see a nice simple one, to, an easy one to remember this time. So we'll start off again with our cartwheel drawing. Okay, and in this case, every single one of these protein subunits that makes up this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor will be the alpha-7 subunit. Okay, so you have alpha-7, 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 and then this last one, just for a change, will be alpha-7. So this is the alpha-7-5 homo pentamer, because you've got the same thing in all five slots. Okay, right. So, the alpha-7 homopentamer is in the brain, and it's got slightly different properties to the other ones that we've seen so far. It has these A, B, C, D, E, F loops again, but in fact, every single alpha-7 subunit has all six of these um, motifs. So here is the A so, um, loop, here is the B loop, here is the C loop, and then on this side, it will have the D, E, and F loop. Okay, so here's D, here's E, and here's F. And remember, they're called loops, even though D, E, and F are beta pleated sheets. Now, think about what's going to happen if absolutely every single one of those alpha-7 subunits has this same arrangement. Well, this next alpha-7 subunit here is going to be exactly the same. So it will have the A, the B, the C loop, and I'll stop labelling them now because it uh, makes it look messy and it's also um, time-consuming. So here is the A, the B, the C loop. So you're going to get an effective binding site here because you've got the A, B, C motif, and then you've got the D, E, F. So that's an acetylcholine binding site. Then over here... This alpha seven loop is all sorry. This alpha seven uh, protein is also going to have the D, E, and F loops. Okay. Then this next one will have the A, B, and the C domains, forming another acetylcholine binding site. And this process continues. So over here, you will then have another acetylcholine binding site. So how many acetylcholine binding sites are you going to end up with? Well, you're going to end up with five acetylcholine binding sites. So the alpha-7 homopentamer is different from the two other nicotine ac nicotinic acetylcholine receptors that we've seen, in that uh, both the uh, skeletal muscle form, the alpha-1 to beta-1 uh, delta epsilon form, and also uh, the alpha-3 to beta-4-3 um, form of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, which was in these autonomic ganglia, both of those only bound two acetylcholine molecules. This alpha-7-5 homopentamer is going to bind five acetylcholine molecules. So, when five acetylcholine molecules bind to this alpha-7-5 homopentamer, then what will happen is the uh, alpha-7-5 homopentamer will open and it will allow ions, uh, well, specifically 
sodium ions to move into the cell and that will depolarize this postsynaptic cell and cause an excitatory postsynaptic potential in that postsynaptic cell and therefore it's an excitatory uh, receptor here. Okay, and it is this form that it is believed that nicotine works through i.e. how nicotine produces its um, happy effect or its addictive effect, I don't know because I've never smoked, uh, but how it produces the effect that people like is believed to be through acting on these alpha-7-5 homopentamers within the brain. I think these alpha-7-5 homopentamers are uh, believed to be um, found on the area of the brain that is responsible for addiction, basically, and it stimulates that area uh, that's associated with re reward, and therefore uh, sets the process of addiction up, basically. So, let's look at um, the pharmacological agents which interact with uh, this um, receptor. Okay, so agonists for this receptor, again, the endogenous agonist is acetylcholine, and I've just told you that uh, an exogenous agonist is nicotine, and we think that's very important for the addictive properties of nicotine. Okay, now antagonists, as far as antagonists go, so let's talk about antagonists now. This alpha-7, uh, uh, sorry, this alpha-7-5 homopentamer is susceptible to alpha-bungarotoxin. So alpha-bungarotoxin, BGTX, I'll write here, does bind to the binding sites of this alpha-7-5 homopentamer and will stop acetylcholine from binding. So if you are, um, if you expose your alpha-7-5 homopentamer to alpha-bungarotoxin, then it will bind to these binding sites and stop acetylcholine from being able to bind to them. Okay, and uh, finally, uh, another antagonist for uh, these receptors is a molecule known as methyl, sorry, methyl like aconitide. Whoops, aconitine rather, like aconitine. Methyl like aconitine. I can't pronounce that. Right, so let me write that again. Okay, because uh, I've made a little smudge there. So. This antagonist, which we'll see again because it's an antagonist for uh, the other brain isoform as well, is known as methyl-like aconitine. And I did try and um, Google how to pronounce this, but I couldn't find out. Methyl-like aconitine, I think, is how you would pronounce that. Methyl-like aconitine. Okay, uh, so methyl-like aconitine is an antagonist for these alpha-7-5 uh, homopentamers. It will bind to these five binding sites on the alpha-7-5 homopentamer, and it will block acetylcholine from being able to bind. Okay, right. So, in the next video, what we'll talk about is the other form of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor which you find in the brain, which is uh, namely the alpha-4-2-beta-2-3 uh, um, heteropentamer.